Good morning guys, what's good? Happy Thursday to all of you. In this video, we're just gonna show you guys our carnivore meals, talk a little bit about cow beef brain, and we've got an angel wing lift. So let's get started. So this morning, I've been waking up like earlier and earlier, and so it is pitch black. So it's a lot of blue light, artificial light, I'm sorry. But it is already time to make another batch of bone broth, and since February is our duck month, why not make a duck bone broth, okay? Let's see what's in our pot here. All right, so we're making this duck bone broth out of some duck necks. Duck necks! And we've got some duck feeties, some webbed duck feeties. And then, of course, some duck heads. And I want to point out this guy in particular because he's got a swag level 3000. Look at this swag. So we're gonna start our morning off per usual at the gym with an angel wing lift. Gotta maintain that angel status. And as a reminder, chest and shoulders are for angel wing density. Back is for maximum angel flight. Triceps and biceps, angel wing aesthetics, very important. So let's get going. Welcome back to the vlog. You will see that I left my hair in its natural state, which is like some spirally curls, and that was indeed strategy. I wanted to match today's topic of choice, which is beef brains. Look at those ruffles and spirals and stuff. Check it out. Ever since we posted that beef brain quiche, we've been getting a lot of questions about where we source beef brain from. So we wanted to talk about the taste, texture, description of beef brain, why you might consider incorporating it into your diet, and then if you are interested, the safety and where you can source beef brain. So let's start with the description of beef brain. The texture itself, I would say, is pretty slimy, soft, spongy, foam-like, cloud-like. It's kind of dreamy. It's very interesting. You've probably never had anything like the texture of beef brain. I would say the closest offal is like sweet breads maybe? I don't know, it's, it's hard. It's very soft and taste wise, beef brain itself is very neutral. So if I were to do a little bit of a raw taste test right now, you can just like kind of get some goop, break it apart. <laughs> Ah, 
It honestly doesn't taste like much, which is good because that means it's a very neutral tasting offal and you can easily mask it by putting it into other recipes or you can add taste to it by adding seasonings, spices, or sauces of your choice. So although it seems kind of intimidating to think of eating brain, which is a whole other topic, the offal itself is not intimidating to eat whatsoever. Brain is one of the offals that we included in our Oregon Cyclopedia. The Oregon Cyclopedia. So we just got this hard copy version of the book in the mail, guys. This was like a little fun side project, but it turned out so... It's just very rewarding to create something and then just put it out there in the world for other people to get. So it's been a lot of fun, and I really hope if anybody who does get it does enjoy it. So basically, anyway, here's a little sneak preview of the brain section. So we detail the taste, texture, preparation tips, species comparison, macronutrients, and then micronutrients that brain is high in. So I'll give you a little view of what it looks like. So brain itself is high in vitamin B12, choline, phosphorus, and selenium. It's also high in cholesterol, which we're gonna do an entire another video on carnivore and high cholesterol levels and why this isn't necessarily something to worry about given the context. So that's a whole other video. It's also high in DHA, which they say you should like eat a brain to get a brain. You know, you should eat things that your body needs to heal. So if you could use some smarts, maybe you could get a brain. And I honestly do feel sharper when I am eating brain. In terms of macronutrients, for about 100 grams of raw brain, it's about 10 to 12 grams of protein, eight to 10 grams of fat. So it's kind of middle grade for everything. And then obviously there's residual carbs in most offals, but we do not consider those. They're very minuscule. So it is a good source of both protein and fat. So brain is awesome in that standard, in that regard. So when it comes to actually sourcing beef brains, it is a struggle. You probably will not find brains at the typical market or grocery store. And reason being is that brain was actually banned from being sold in many markets. Back in the 1990s, there was a fear of mad cow disease, which is bovine spongy form encephalopathy. It's a mouthful. Basically, this is a neurodegenerative disease that a cattle can get and then us as humans can get it from eating infected meat. It is deadly, so it's nothing to take lightly, but the recent statistic is that there is basically a one in a billion chance of getting mad cow disease in today's market. The practices back in the 1990s when this was all arising were to grind carcasses of dead sheep, goats, and other cattle and put that back into cattle as their feed. So no wonder when, with those nasty practices that the cattle were getting sick and then we were getting sick from eating that meat. But back then, that caused brain to actually be outlawed in many places and this is still the case today. However, the FDA has several measures in place that make the contraction of getting actually getting mad cow disease very unlikely. But like I said, this makes sourcing beef brains very difficult because it is banned from being sold in many different places. So we got the brain that I've been showing you guys from our full cow. Our farmer here can access it from his processor. Sometimes it's the processor who can't give it back to the farmer. Sometimes it's the farmer who can't legally sell it to a customer. I don't even know what's going on in terms of it finding it at the market. But from our experience, we've been around several different farmers in the Midwest. So Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and then uh, White Oak Pastures down in Georgia too. It varies based on the farmer in terms of being able to access the brain. So like I said, our farmer here can access the brain from the processor and give it to us when we bought our full cow. He doesn't sell individual brains he gets back from the processor. He, he just doesn't function that way. However, other farmers have said that they simply can't get it back from the processor. White Oak Pastures is one of those farms that cannot legally sell beef brain, I do not believe, but this is not to mean you can't get it at all. First step, finding beef brain. I would recommend finding a local farmer. You can find one at www.eatwild.com. That is the best first place, or I think Local Harvest is another website. You can find a local farmer. Go from there. So call up the farmer, ask if they can get it from their processor, ask if they can get it for you, ask if you can maybe buy a head, and go from there. If you still can't find it, you could try other species brains first. So for example, White Oak Pasture sells full heads from turkeys, chickens, ducks, um, other small species. And what you can do then is crack open the skull yourself after buying the head and access the brain. Poultry brains are really tiny. 3.28 a.m. Here we have a tiny duck brain. 
that we recently got from a full duck from white oak pasture. So you'll notice this is the entire brain. It's super tiny. Whereas in comparison, this is about a half of a beef brain. It is a whole handful, a lot bigger. But in comparison to other species, so chicken, duck, turkey brains are all gonna be a little bit smaller. So here's a cooked one. Obviously taste will vary from raw versus cooked, but it's still pretty neutral. So if you are intimidated by a beef brain, you could start with a smaller, tiny, cute little brain from like a chicken. Not intimidating at all. And if you're still kind of weary on eating the brain itself, we like to make our broths using heads because they add a ton of flavor to the broth and a ton of nutrients. So you could technically just put a brain into your crock pot to make bone broth and then potentially the nutrients from the brain will leach out into the broth that you consume. And then you can actually pull the head out from there and it's going to be a lot softer to dissect and you can get the cooked brain out and try it in one bite. It's tiny, I promise. But I know Ashley has a whole thing she wanted to talk about in terms of the importance of where you source all of your animal products from. So did you touch briefly on like the nutritional benefits of sourcing from good quality? No, not really. Okay, so obviously the feed and the soil and the grasses that the animals are gonna be sourcing on is directly going to contribute to the amount of micronutrients and nutrients in these off parts, right? And I think that that's an important consideration is where you're sourcing these will dictate the quality of the final part. Um, but I think a further implication is where you're sourcing directly implies what you're doing to the soil. So supporting mono species, so multiple species, local farms that are contributing to the soil and repairing the soil is super important. So especially in the US, our soil is crap. We have really degraded our soil and in order to improve the health of our soil, we need small local farmers that are practicing responsible grazing. And poly species grazing is very, very important. Each animal has a unique role in improving the soil. And so supporting big farms that are doing, that are promoting rotational grazing for just cattle, I would say isn't the best option. I think that finding your small local farmer and supporting a farmer who's using cows, pigs, chickens, because all of these animals are uniquely contributing to diversifying the soil and trying to bring the health of the soil back to this country. And that's why we're super passionate about finding your local farmer. If you do not have a local farmer, we always suggest trying to buy from White Oak Pastures. They have 10 animal species responsibly grazing all around their land, and they have shown to operate at a net carbon negative which is awesome. And they're, the green grass there, the soil health there is incredible. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, sustainability is one of the reasons we're so passionate about no till eating actually, because otherwise there's a ton of nutrients in here. And if we're just throwing away offal parts, that's a lot of nutrients going to waste. You might as well use that whole animal. Stay tuned for a zero waste white oak pastures video coming out later this week that's gonna detail their zero waste policy, which is honestly incredible. Be careful of the greenwashing terms where it seems like a lot of comp like a lot of grocery stores are shipping in meat products from other countries and do you really want to be supporting it's, it's great that they're doing rotational grazing in that country, but we need it here. You also we need, can't verify their practices. You, you, you're not sure of their practices. We need that soil regeneration here. So find your local farmer or use white oak pastures, please. Please, Please, but I need to I'll show you guys also something. link in the description below an entire post series I did on what greenwashing means and decisive labeling terms to keep your eyes out for. In terms of like, you will end up wasting money if you're buying like some specific like natural. Natural doesn't mean anything, but it will be price tagged higher than just normal conventional. Chances are it's the exact same beef just with a flashy name. So I'll put the looking into I did on greenwashing in the description below. Got to share an update. Another successful recipe in the books. Just took some absolute money shots. That's fantastic. So here it is. I sliced a little piece out of it. So this is a pate. Ooh! So the recipe for this, in addition to over 150 nose to tail recipes to take your nose to tail game to a whole nother level, will be coming whole out with Dr. Paul Saladino in a few months. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We got y'all coming Y'all will know all the first details on that. And I definitely want to add, which we talk about this in the Oregon Cyclopedia, our experience getting into offal parts. So we did not grow up eating beef brains. 
We did not even grow up eating liver. I'm pretty sure we detail this in here, but our first encounter with an old fool was in Rumaki. It is bacon wrapped liver from a local Chinese place that we used to eat at, and I'm pretty positive that we would unwrap the bacon, throw out the liver, and just eat the bacon. So we never actually ate the liver. So no, we did not grow up eating these parts, but it has been a fantastic journey getting into eating more nose to tail. If you are a fellow foodie and you are animal based now, nose to tail eating is the way to go to get creative in the kitchen. We love eating these different parts. It is truly a sustainable approach to shake to carnivore and it, it, it's a lot of fun. I highly suggest you look into it and like I said, we detail our experience in the book of how we got into it, the mental shifts we had to take. Like our dad says, he always says we need to tell people this. Our dad is not willing to eat many awful parts because of literally the look of them or just the thought that it is indeed an awful part, like it is indeed a liver or it is indeed a brain or the brain looks squishy or the chicken foot is a foot, like what? Even though a foot tastes basically like a chicken wing, he's just turned off completely and I totally get that. I personally don't experience that at all, like I could easily go and eat that raw brain for whatever reason, it really doesn't bother me. I think it has a lot to do with looking into this lifestyle and recognizing the importance and the fact that this is species appropriate nutrients that we're eating and so it just makes sense to eat these parts. But if you are somebody who struggles with the actual look of it and the thought of eating some of these parts, check out our book. We detail different ways to camouflage all the different parts, so ways that you can sneak in these nutrients into other food items without even knowing that you're eating them. So daddy, next time you eat a stew, you may not know what you're getting. Love you. And on platter number one will be some beef brains. We're not gonna eat them raw though fully. We are going to cook them. So I'm gonna show you how we are cooking these up. First thing I'm going to do with the brain to make it a little bit more approachable is I'm going to dice it into smaller cubes. Okay, so I've got the brain into cubes and I have a heated cast iron with some of the tallow spread melted on. Now I'm just going to flop these on here. This is no specific recipe. This is just a very simple way that you can prepare brains. The preparation doesn't need to be intimidating. There's nothing special you really need to do other than potentially clean it if you don't know where you're sourcing it from. So I've got them sauteing on the cast iron and now I'm just going to flip them over to get the other side. If you don't think you're gonna be a fan of the squishiest consistency, you could try frying brain. That's a very popular method too. So you could just do like a batter of pork rinds ground up with some egg yolk and then dip the brain into that and then put them into a deep fryer. We don't have a deep fryer, so the best bet we would have with that is literally to just put batter on the brain and then saute it on the cast iron, but I don't, we personally don't think that the batter is necessary. It still tastes great without it. So I don't think about this often, but it's so interesting to think about what's on my cast iron now, beef brain, compared to what was on my cast iron like a year, two years, three years ago. I was, we were both, Ashley and myself, were super into green bell pepper. That was like our go-to crunchy snack, vegetable nutrients, nightshades. We were eating like six green bell peppers a day, sauteed in soy sauce. Soy. I just don't know. Like, I just don't know. But now it would seem even more insane that we're sauteing beef brains in beef fat. I just don't know, like, it's just crazy how your life can completely shift. I'm letting it cook too much. All right, so it's been sauteing for a while. I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, so we have the final product. Like I said, no fancy recipe, just a light saute. It smells pretty good. It just smells like some animal products. Like, really, there's nothing intimidating about it, but need one last ingredient and a little bit of salt. Everybody who is hating in the comments about salting our food, we honestly like the taste of salty food better. So let's give it a little taste. Salty. <laughs> so like I said, 
neutral in taste. It will take on the flavor of whatever you season it with. Just basically just tastes like the bottom of a pretzel bag where all the salt is. Very good. I personally like the little bit of a squishy consistency. It's definitely unique. That's another great thing about eating nose to tail is all the unique texture profiles you can come across from crispy to squishy to chewy, like from collagen sources. So guys, if you aren't convinced yet, give Beef Brain a try. I am like a Beef Brain spokeswoman advocate 2020. Try some Beef Brain in 2020. It is time for platter number one. Say says Ashley's. He's watching you. We've got some round steak, beef brain, raw beef suet, some duck liver pate, two over easy boot. Sorry, sunny side up eggs. All right, let's see yo. My brain feeling so sharp after that meal. All the nutrients in the brain, which is good, because I gotta go to the lab. G two G. Okay, no, but seriously, something that we don't really talk about enough is how much more mental clarity and brain focus we can achieve eating this way. Even relative to keto diet, I feel so much more, I feel so much sharper. It's amazing. Like, am I smarter? Probably not. I just am able to focus more, you know? Right, day two of the cut, and I looked at myself in the mirror today and I said, yes, girl, yes. Looking lean. Good girl, I'm just kidding. But honestly, okay, I want you, if you're doing this cut with us, even if you're not, if you're bulking right now, I want you to adopt this mindset. Be your own cheerleader, okay? Have a little parade for yourself every single day. You stayed on track yesterday? Girl, yes! Have a celebration. Don't just like celebrate by eating things that you like are now like treat foods you deserve or whatever, which like you do, but celebrate by making yourself feel better. Be, take pride in yourself. Like, tell yourself how proud you are for committing to a goal and kicking ass every single day and go from there. So never get down on yourself. Always be your own cheerleader. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. She is always right there when I need her. Mm -hmm. Think that I found myself a cheerleader. Yeah, so no big deal, but I was like a top soprano in my middle grade choir practice group thing. You probably could have assumed that though. But nine times out of 10, our platters are pretty simple. It's usually our steak suet and eggs combo, which is honestly just our favorite. It's so fast to whip up, and you are getting a ton of nutrients just from these animal products, but we do like to incorporate at least once a day some sort of offal, typically in the form of liver, <laughs> and then every so often throughout the week we'll do a more fun part like brain or spleen or something interesting, and then of course we have our nose to tail feast day where we do a few different awful parts. But it's not every single meal and you really don't have to eat them all the time to benefit from the nutrients in awful parts just from eating them from time to time, right? Yeah, I just have something to share. She has something to share. <laughs> What's up? I like my egg whites thin and my egg yolks raw. <laughs> okay. How you like your eggs? Fried off order line. Set up. We have sometimes have like little arguments because sometimes she wants hers scrambled, but I prefer mine sunny, sunny side, up. side up. So last meal of the day today, we got three sunny side up, three chicken boobs. Then we've got. Let me get a better look at this. Okay. The chuck steak right here, and then the remaining of our brisket. Sad times. Sad times. And then raw beef suet. Everything seasoned with the Redmond and a cup of bone broth. It is indeed time to eat, yo. Time to eat, yo. And we will check in with y'all tomorrow morning. Until then, behave like the angels that you are, okay? 